Model engineering for beginners. Testing my smart and brown lathe and looking at a multi-size collet system. I've been making some minor modifications to this lathe and I just want to make sure that everything works. After a recent repaint I made this brass cover for all the controls. What do these controls do? The ones on the brass plate I'm talking about. The left hand side one is the forward and reverse lever. It's just a switch and it reverses the motor. The larger lever to the right of the smaller one is a two speed clutch. If you move the lever to the left the spindle rotates faster, move it to the right and it slows down. The green button and the red button are fairly self explanatory, they are the start and stop buttons. This lathe is very powerful and I always treat it with a lot of respect. Here I'm facing across the front of a piece of steel. It's not free cutting steel, it's just a random piece of steel out of my box. To save time the video in quite a few of these clips is running at a higher speed. I'd like to mention the quick change tool holder, have a close look at it. The problem is this cutting tool is too big for this tool holder and the holder is right at the bottom of the slide. And this means that the holder isn't fully supported. Ideally the quick change holder needs to be halfway down the tool post, that way it's held most securely. This tool by the way is called a negative rake tool because the tip points downwards. As you can see as the tool is cutting the swarf is coming off the piece of steel, a nice blue colour and occasionally red with sparks. This turning operation would benefit by using some soluble oil or coolant. But for the purposes of the demonstration it's ok. In this clip I've fitted a piece of cast iron into the chuck and this cuts like butter and does not need any coolant. This however is another hard piece of steel. I've changed the tool for an entirely different type, this is not a negative rake tool. The top of it is almost flat and it cuts very differently to the previous one that I've shown. And once again owing to the thickness of the shank of the tool, the tool holder is held too low in the tool post. In these demonstrations I really am treating the lathe very carefully because I've broken a couple of tool holders because when they sat right at the bottom of the tool post they really aren't supported very well. I continued to take gentle facing cuts and eventually I got through the hole that's in the centre of the piece of steel. At this moment in time I have three lathes, I have a Boxford, a Myford and this one. This is a four jaw self centering chuck, not to be confused with a four jaw independent chuck, as I rotate the chuck key all of the jaws move together. The good thing about this chuck is the diameter of the work that it will hold and of course the work is supported by four jaws instead of three. The large piece of bar that I've been turning went all the way into the chuck. If I remove it and hold it up against the Myford's chuck you can get some idea of scale. I could actually hold this piece of steel in the Myford's chuck but I would have to change the jaws for the outside type and really I think this piece of steel is a bit too big. You may be thinking well why do I need so many lathes? Well I don't really, I could make do with one. I use three lathes for the simple reason in the Boxford lathe that I have, I have a standard three jaw chuck. This is fine for turning round bar and hexagon. The Smart and Brown fitted with this self centering four jaw chuck is ideal for round bar, square bar or even tubing. The four jaws grip a lot better than three. The Myford is a brilliant little lathe and it's great for smaller stuff. On the Smart and Brown lathe the chucks are fastened to the spindle using a cam lock system. This one is a D14. You can tighten or slacken the cams depending whether you want to remove the chuck or fit it. I tried to video removing the chuck but I got in the way. This chuck is just a little bit too heavy to remove at arm's length. When I did remove it, here's what's left. This is the cam lock system on the spindle. This is a box which contains a Bernard multi size collet chuck type KC15 D4. In my opinion, this thing is a work of art. It's very easy to use, and the multi size collets are very useful for different diameters. I like everything about it the styling, the design, and the functionality. This is the box of collets that I got with it. I bought this 25 years ago, and it was extremely expensive even then. I think I paid around about £500 for it, and that was a knockdown price, it was supposed to be 750 But you get what you pay for, it's still as good as new all these years later. 
Over time, the collets which had been on the shelf for many years did get a bit rusty, but I fixed that by using my ultrasonic cleaner with a special liquid that removes rust. Here's a random piece of steel that I'm fitting into one of the multi-size collets. If I was going to make some axles for, say, a steam locomotive, I would use silver steel, which is accurately ground. All I would have to do is turn down the ends of each piece of silver steel to fit into the wheel castings. Using a multi-size collet chuck makes this job very easy, because you can turn one end of the axle, then remove the axle from the chuck, turn it round, turn the other end, and that's one axle done, and it's totally accurate. This piece of steel, by the way, is not silver steel, it's just a random piece of old steel from my scrap box. And it isn't very accurate. I'd like to show you this function. At the front of the lathe are two things that rotate. The top one is the lead screw, this is used for screw cutting. And the bottom one is used for auto-feed of the cross slide and the main lathe saddle. On a tool room lathe such as this, it has a separate lead screw, so the lead screw doesn't get worn by being used to drive the feeds. On my Boxford and Myford lathes, this is not the case. There's just one lead screw that does all the jobs. The gearbox allows quick and easy setting of the feed and the lead screw for either screw cutting or just for general turning. It's good to be able to face off under power without having to touch the wheel, but most of the time, this auto traverse is used in longitudinal mode, such as this for general turning of pieces of metal. As I've mentioned a couple of times in this video, these tools are too big for the tool post and I really don't think that they've been held quite as securely as they should be. So forgive me if I don't show a parting off operation because I really don't want to snap off the tool holder. And yes, I have done this before. On all of my lathes, I have the belts a little bit on the slack side, so if anything does go wrong and the lathe locks up, minimum damage occurs. Experts will probably cringe at this comment, but it's worked for me over many years, and I seldom break anything on the machines. I definitely do not profess to be a machinist. I just use my common sense to stop my machines from being damaged by my incompetence. The Smart and Brown is much bigger than my other two lathes, and the spindle's internal diameter is one and a half inches. Sometimes it's very useful to be able to turn large pieces of metal. Recently, I made a replacement part for my son-in-law Robert's tractor, but the Smart and Brown wasn't ready, so I used the Boxford, and I couldn't fit the part down the spindle, so it had to be done between centres, and it took a lot longer than it should have done. This piece of steel was very hard, I think it's a part of a half shaft or something that had snapped off. But with the negative rake tool fitted in the tool post, after just one rough cut, the finish was quite good. I would only fit this collet chuck for specific jobs, but it's just great to have it. In this clip I'm refitting the very large and heavy self-centering chuck, and as you can see, it's a bit of a struggle. But eventually I engage the three D1 prongs with the holes in the spindle. And then using the Boxford's chuck key that fits the cam lock perfectly, I re-tighten the three cam locks. And that's about it for a quick look at my Smart and Brown lathe. I hope I've explained why I find it necessary and useful to have three lathes. I must admit though, this is my favourite, it's a great old machine. I sold it to my friend and bought it back off him and I'm glad I did. Stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.